Question three is about photosynthesis and the first thing you have to do is write a balanced simple equation for the process. Before you do that just jot down somewhere next to it, it doesn't matter if you scribble on your paper, um, what the word equation is so you can work out if you've got it right before you start the symbol equation. So in photosynthesis water and carbon dioxide join together to make glucose, sugar and oxygen. When you're happy that you've remembered it um, you can then work out what the formula will be. You've been told what the formula for um, glucose sugar is and you know that the only place the carbon can come from is carbon dioxide so you know that there must be six carbon atoms starting on the left hand side and therefore you can work out how to balance up the water and on the right hand side you're going to have to balance the oxygen produced. The easy way to remember is the six carbons at the beginning, so the six carbon dioxides, six oxygens produced at the end, and six waters start at the beginning. So six waters plus six carbon dioxides makes one glucose sugar plus six oxygen molecules. The problem is if you get this bit wrong, you'll probably muddle up the equation. It doesn't matter which way round you want you write your water and carbon dioxide as long as you've worked out how they balance. So easy marks for there, two marks for getting it right. If you've got some of it right, if you got for example the formulae right but you didn't balance it then you get one mark or if you balanced it um, but didn't get the formulae right you get one mark but two marks for getting it balanced and getting the right formulae. The second part of the question is about what happens to the sugar. So some sugar is used for respiration in the plant, some uses to, is used to build molecules like cellulose and starch, but some is also used to make amino acids. Here's proline, C5H9NO2, and Paul, who's doing this experiment, has concluded that one molecule of glucose is the only thing needed to make proline. He's wrong, and simply if you explained that nitrogen was needed because the formula contains nitrogen which can't have come from anywhere in your first equation then you get a mark. If you've also said where it comes from nitrates that the plant has absorbed for its roots you get another mark. If you explained that you need enzymes to build amino acids so proline is built using enzymes that will also give you a mark because they have to be constructed and there's energy needed to do that building so extra glucose will be needed to provide energy for the enzymes to build the proline. All of those could gain a mark and there are three available in total. The next part of the question is about this graph. Okay, so Paul's investigating the rate of photosynthesis and changing different variables. It tells you at the beginning that light intensity is kept constant, so you cannot use light as your answer for part C. It says the rate of photosynthesis can be affected by several limiting factors. What is the limiting factor at point A? Well, if you look at point A, if you increase the temperature... So you're going from 15 degrees up to 20 degrees C, you get more photosynthesis. The rate of photosynthesis has gone up, so there's a new level. If you decrease the temperature, go down to 10 degrees C, there's less photosynthesis. You've got a lower level. So this shows that temperature is affecting the rate of photosynthesis, and that's the answer, temperature. And you've got to explain at the higher temperature, the rate is higher. Here, so you warm up the whole plant and measure the intensity of photosynthesis production and it increases. What doesn't change is the rate of photosynthesis if you add more carbon dioxide. So if you burn some fuel and produce gas with carbon dioxide and pump it into your greenhouse, you don't get any change if the temperature doesn't get warmer. So more and more carbon dioxide added produces no increase in photosynthesis and at this temperature cooling it down will produce less photosynthesis but just taking the carbon dioxide out up to a point won't change the rate. So the answer for part C is temperature change because the higher the temperature the higher the rate of photosynthesis and increasing the carbon dioxide level does not change the rate. The next part is this tick box. Okay, 
From his experiment, Paul can conclude some of these things and can't 